All righty. The Astros took care of the Angels. Three to one. Now they go to face a team in the desert full of former Astros. That is the Arizona Diamondbacks for a two-game series. And who is starting on Wednesday's game? We don't know. It could be Farmer Valdez. It could be Justin Verlander. We're going to talk about this and more on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. Find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. And Brett is doing his dad duties with uh, with baseball right now. So I've got a, uh, a friend of mine, uh, somebody who was from the Houston preeminence day with Jason Braddock. Uh, Tom, uh, t- uh, where can they find you on Twitter, Tom? Good evening, Eric. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Third Coast Tom. Uh, glad to be with you tonight. All right. Thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen, whether it's on YouTube. Keep on subscribing. Our numbers keep on going up and give us a like while you're there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and premiere this later on. So um, I think Tom's going to go ahead and uh, join us for the premiere and interact with y'all. But uh, thank you for doing this and make us your first listen on your way to work. Why don't you go and subscribe to us on Apple and listen to us on Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast, make us your first listen. So we got a lot to talk about today, but I guess the big uh, thing that we need to talk about to lead off is uh, Alex Bregman. He was named a player of the week. I granted it was only what, four days, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, whatever. It's still the player of the week. And this is a player who struggled last year. He, st- he struggled to stay healthy. He only hit 12 home runs all of last year, but now he's already got two home runs. And uh, there's a lot of guardians fans who are like, yeah, he, he had a good week, but what about our guy, uh, Quan Lee or Quan, uh, I need to look up his name, but he he's uh, hitting a lot of singles and, but uh, Steven Quan, sorry, uh, Steven Quan uh, is batting. Uh, I think he had some more hits today. He's batting like something like six fifty two or something. And so, how did you vote for Alex Bregman over that? Because he's sitting, hitting all singles. That's what's going on. And Alex Bregman's hitting for power. He's got uh, six RBIs, and he, he's just being back to being Alex Bregman. So what are your thoughts so far about the Astros? I mean, got to say, it was amazing to see them. Uh, you know, Alex Bregman's a notoriously slow starter. So injuries aside, normally doesn't ramp up right away. He was really able to turn it on. He looks he looks midseason Bregman. Uh, he was making plays in the in the in the infield on defense, uh, hustling down the line, beating out throws. Uh, he looks in phenomenal shape, uh, despite what you might have saw on Twitter with the with the space uh, the the space city <laughs> launch. Somebody put like thirty pounds on him, something like that. <laughs> Even he uh, posted had a chuckle. You know who did this? But um, man, he looks great. The Strohs look great. Framber. Framber was amazing the way, you know, his swagger, his demeanor, just awesome. The Astros look like they're going to be a team that's going to be really, really tough to deal with uh, if they can stay healthy. All right. This was before Tuesday's game. Uh, Stephen Kwan had in uh, 14 at bats, had a OPS, uh, I mean, sorry, a slugging percentage of 1,000. He had a W, uh, a WOBA of 770 and a W. RC plus of 395. Granted, it's a small sample size, so that's pretty high. Uh, but then you have Alex Bregman in uh, four games with 14 at bats with a slugging percentage of 857, uh, 262 um, WRC plus, and a WOBA of uh, 561. But what Quan's doing is he's doing it with a lot of doubles, maybe some uh, a whole lot of singles. But he's having a lot of three for three, four for fours, or whatever. He he's doing. He's kind of coming out of nowhere for the Guardians, and the Guardians are doing really good. They just extended Miles Straw to a, uh, a long term deal, and I love that what they did. They said we just extended <laughs> our straw, 
uh, that was classic marketing. And uh, speaking of classic marketing, uh, uh, we're, we're going to play the Dimebacks. And after Seth Beer hit that home run, they went ahead and gave away uh, 10,000 beers to uh, the first 20, uh, the first 10,000 people that came in who were 21 and over. So baseball is doing a great job marketing for uh, their fans right now. So, um, but overall, uh, let's, what about the pitching staff? Is there anybody that's kind of raising red flags for you right now? Uh, well, if there is one red flag, it was uh, the reliever, uh, Baez, right? Pedro Baez, was, yes. Oh, man. Uh, a lot of them was made out of, you know, his his velocity, you know, after coming off the injury, but it just really looks bad right now. I don't know. I don't know that he's going to make this this club, you know, with some of the, the the talent that's in the minor leagues right now that could easily come in and, you know, do the, the that reliever role. It's going to be really interesting to see, like, if he doesn't turn it around, how long they stick with him. Yeah, because uh, right now he's throwing between 86 and 90 miles per hour. Last year, he was throwing 92 miles per hour. That was down from the previous year, which was 94 and 95. So there's a downward turn uh, in math. We call that decaying. It's decreasing. <laughs> so that's not a good uh, thing when you're a pitcher. And I know a lot of people will say, well, what about Ryan Presley? You're talking about Pedro Baez and uh, not Ryan Presley. Ryan Presley's um, average um, mouse on his fastball right now is 91, 93. Yes, it's a little bit down from last year where he averaged 95 miles per hour. But um, I would say that he's maybe he's just not ready yet. As Dusty Baker keeps on saying, this is still spring training games. These guys haven't got a chance to get fully stretched. And as I told Brett yesterday or the other day, I forget, we have don't do so many podcasts, but um, if he's still doing this in May or in June, that's where we can start wor worrying. But Ryan Presley is still doing a great job. Uh, Rafael Montero looks great. Uh, Hector um, Hector Neris is looking great. A lot of the Astros bullpen is looking great. There's just one rotten apple in this bullpen. And I'm sorry, Pedro Baez, you are it. You are the rotten <laughs> apple. I mean, I really, I totally agree with you. Uh, Rafael Montero was hurt also. So for him to come in and show really well, uh, I mean, like you said, there's so much talent in, in a position that's normally a position of need in the bullpen. So when you see Baez struggle the way he struggles, it's like it's glaring. So you really hope that either he turns it around quick or they make the adjustment they need to make. Because other than that, this roster is clicking on all cylinders. Uh, yeah, just like their GM. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're talking about before show. Framer Valdez was really great. He pitched six and two thirds scoreless innings on opening day. Justin Verlander made his first start in 624 days, and he pitched five innings of one run, run ball. He gave up the home run. Jose Arquiti pitched five innings of one run ball. I think he gave up a home run. And Jake Odorizzi, a lot of people don't appreciate how what the what contribution this guy is going to make this year but he pitched four innings uh, he wasn't great but he he kept the team in the game and uh luis garcia is next uh, and so we don't know this guy could be one of the astros better pitchers and he is the fifth pitcher on this team so that shows how deep this astros rotation is if this bullpen is any good as as good as this team has shown uh, so far and the offense continues. Uh, we'll talk about how good the offense can be in a second. But this team could be very dominant. This team could win a whole lot of games this year. Uh, so uh, which hitter are you looking at having a big year this year? Well, I mean, the obvious the obvious guys are out there, right? I could say Kyle Tucker. Love Kyle Tucker. Everybody expects him to make the next step. Jordan Alvarez. Also, everybody expects him to mash. I love what I saw out of Jeremy Pena, like for him to come out the gate like he did and to be able to sustain it, you know, after hitting the home run in front of mom and dad, you know, the entire thing, I, I got to believe he's for real. And you kind of expected a slow start. You were okay. Hey, play defense. We're good. The bat we're getting right now, that's a bonus. I, I love it. Right. So if you're looking at the home run potential of the Astros, this was uh, before uh, Monday's games. I, I think I've said Tuesdays, but this is before Monday's games. Uh, the Astros are second in the American League 
Actually, they're second in baseball with eight home runs. They're tra trailing only the Twins with nine home runs. In terms of runs scored, they are, I believe they are third last I looked. It was, oh, hold on, it's updating. But it was, oh, they're fourth. Uh, they're tied for third with the Blue Jays with 20 uh, runs scored. The Cleveland Guardians of all teams have scored 28 runs. Um, OPS, the Astros are um, not quite as high. They're 10th with uh, 753 OPS. Uh, the batting average is not quite as good either. Uh, it, it's 225. Um, but they are uh, actually it's to, yeah, 225, which is uh, 17th. So they're living by the long ball. They're not really hitting for a high batting average right now. I think what we've seen is the Astros rely on a lot of the young players with a lot of the veterans taking uh, the days off and Dusty Baker kind of going with those guys. So maybe that would explain why you, you see a lot of the batting average. But uh, as we know, batting average is not something you could bet on. And speaking of betting, let's talk about betonline.net. Uh, it's your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info find all the latest sports development league reviews and news including your this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the major league baseball season which has already happened nba playoffs who do you got uh, go to betonline.net and they'll tell you who you should bet on betonline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs esports and more head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action Bet online where the game starts. And um, H Town Wheelhouse, he loves him some Jeremy Pena. It sounded like he's going to probably make a little um, friendly wager or something on him winning a rookie year. But that's got to be some big odds because there's some big rookies out there. So, uh, but you know why the Astros are three and one right now, Tom? You have to look at the pitching staff. What the Astros pitching is doing is great so far. They are third in terms of ERA with a 1.80 ERA. They're trailing only the Mets with a 1.54 ERA and the Rays with a 1.33 ERA. Uh, the whip overall is um, update. It's whip is a little bit, um, it's ninth with a 1.06 and the Mets are the highest with um, 0 0.71 and strikeouts. Uh, let's look at strikeouts. The Astros are seventh uh, with uh, 32 strikeouts. So overall the Astros are getting it done this year with the pitching. The hitting is just good enough to get it done. We saw that one game where they, they couldn't score any runs, um, but that you're going to have that. So um, any thoughts about anything I just said? I mean, that was the big concern coming in, right? McCullers wasn't going to be ready for the start. Verlander wasn't going to be ready opening day. The pitching staff, the pitching staff, the relievers, half of the guys, names you might not be familiar with, names you might have forgot about. I mean, the Naris signing happened, you know, kind of right before the the, the lockout. lockout so, yeah. so a lot of people are like, they forgotten men. And then you see it all come together opening day. You see it come together, you know, the first four games. I really do wish we give uh, JV the run support he deserves. It's it's almost like it's just bad luck or whatever. Like the rest days kind of fall on his day and he's got to shoulder the load. But man, when you look at some of these, I mean, and even Odorizzi, like you spoke about, not somebody that uh, people want to, to, you know, cheer for because he had some he had some rough starts last season, wasn't his best year. But he's going to eat innings. He's going to he's going to go out and get somewhere between 150, 200 innings. And for this team, he's going to be important. And we have to acknowledge that he doubled his uh, spring training innings in his first game. He pitched two innings in spring training and he went all the way up to four. That's double your pleasure, guys. Come on. All right. Um, so Jose Altuve is struggling a little bit. He did have that home run on Friday, but he's one for 12 with five strikeouts. So. That's one reason why batting average is a little bit low. And you have a couple other guys that are kind of struggling a little bit. But I think uh, I'm not worried about Jose Altuve. Uh, if you're looking at batting average, only Kyle Tucker's not doing great. But we know that he's had that two home run game. So I'm not worried about batting average. Batting average doesn't tell you everything. But I want to go ahead and move on to start looking at the Astros versus Diamondbacks. I know it's only going to be two game series. And uh, Dusty Baker has already named Luis Garcia as a starter for game one. Um, 
and possibly uh, from Valdez for Wednesday, but um, they may see how Justin Verlander is feeling before they announce um, to, uh, they may have him start on Wednesday on the five day rest because you have those two off days. So you may see uh, him start on Wednesday, then Farmer Valdez move to Friday. But also it, um, Ben Verlander came on Sports Talk 790 today and said that Justin was dealing with a flu before his last start. So maybe they may just give him the extra time off anyway. So they're probably having that conversation right now. So JV, how do you feel, buddy? Do you want to go Wednesday? Do you want to go Friday? You tell me. And so what do you think, Dusty being Dusty, what do you think the decision is going to be? I, if, it's, if it's me thinking, you know, in Dusty's head, sitting in his chair in his office, he's going to give him an extra day. I feel like uh, when he's got the opportunity to rest guys, he's going to rest guys. And the way for Amber looked opening day, it, it would make all the sense in the world if JV's even a little, uh, let's go ahead and we'll move you back one more day. All right, so um, Zach Gallen, I believe his name is, was supposed to be starting game one uh, for the Diamondbacks, but he was pushed back because he had a little boo-boo on his finger. Uh, he had a little cut on his finger, so he was pushed back two days, so he cannot get that start. And um, So um, instead, it's going to be a mad bum starting for the Diamondbacks, and uh, this is not the same mad bum that threw a um, – seven inning no hitter last year. Uh, this is a guy who's uh, even that's not the same guy. This is not the same guy that dominated for years. This is a shell of himself and watch him come out and dominate the Astros tomorrow. Cause I've been throwing crap at him. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so uh, this is uh, Madison Bumgarner is um, Oh no with the 3.0 ERA this year with two strikeouts. So this is obviously his second start and Luis Garcia is making his first start of the year. Uh, so far, Jose Altuve has some good success against him with two home runs and eight at-bats with a 250 batting average. Alex Bregman has faced him 12 times with uh, only a 167 batting average. Um, nobody else has really – I mean, Kyle Tucker has seen him eight times with a 250 batting average. So there's not really a lot of people that have had a lot of success uh, except for Jose Altuve, but maybe that was a different – Madison Bumgarner in this situation. And if you're looking on the other side, not a lot of people have seen Luis Garcia. So that could be advantage for the Astros, uh, especially the fact that this is his first start of the season. We, we're going to see him do the uh, cha-cha-cha, and uh, I think we're going to see him go out there and dominate. I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, with with him, you see him with, with those guys on, on social media a little bit. You know, they had all the uh, the, the brothers, the, the you know, that crew of pitchers that they hang out a lot. Uh, and I think he's going to be phenomenal. You talked about Altuve. I think this is a get right spot for him. You know, success against Bumgarner, somewhere where he can go, OK, I've been there. I've seen him. I kind of know what to look for. And like historically, Astros versus left handed pitching, they match left handed pitching. So I, I'm hoping that they do just that. Uh, but Carlos Correa was also a big reason for uh, left-handed pitchers. Um, so, um, but he's gone. But uh, Jeremy Pena has been doing really good so far, and this guy is. Um, who knows how good this would be? I'm not going to put the the status of star player on him yet. I need to see it um, a bigger sample size. One weekend is not is not the t not enough of a sample size. To say yeah, this kid's a star. But to have two three hit games in your first weekend of play. That's really great. So uh, do you think that we're going to see a lot of Jose Siri leading off and Jeremy Pena batting second, or you think that was a rare time? Uh, hopefully, and this is nothing against Jose Siri. I love him. He's a great athlete, but that is not the lineup. The one that they put out with Pena in the two hole and Siri leading off. That is not the lineup that we're hoping to see when we, you know, we need Brantley in there. We need Altuve up top. We need Bregman in there. Uh, in some form or fashion, you know, one, two, three, followed by Tucker and Jordan. I love Siri. I love his flamboyance. I love how he, you know, he's got like a, a swagger about him. Uh, but he can do that in the seven hole and the eight hole. Give me the, give me the lineup we're used to seeing at the top. Yeah, and we didn't get to see that uh, this weekend. We saw it game one. We saw the full lineup, and then we had Yuli hit the paternity list, and then we had Dusty Baker sitting all the other guys, and so. 
And Dusty Baker, I love his explanation about sitting Jose Altuve. Yeah, I just woke up in the middle of the night and I just decided to go ahead and sit Jose Altuve. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so when you've done it as long as Dusty has, you can pretty much say whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't argue with him because he they, they still won. So Jose Siri did enough to win that game. Uh, he walked twice. He scored a run. So he still – he didn't hurt the team. So, I mean, as long as you don't make it a regular occurrence. But thankfully, Bregman and Pena were doing a great job. They carried that triple-A – lineup it wasn't triple a lineup i'm <laughs> exaggerating a little bit but nico goodrams should not be batting third ever again i'm not gonna let that go anytime soon so uh what are your predictions for game one game one i hope that we get to Ver or Ver i'm sorry uh bump gardner early i hope that uh they they put up you know three four five runs something like that and we get another solid uh pitching performance I, i'm not gonna be as greedy to say that you know Luis Garcia is going to go out there and pitch five shutout like we got, uh, or I'm sorry, five one run innings like we got from Urquidy, but something similar. And then, and then I think we'll be in a real good spot. Okay. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be a, I'm going to go on limb and say it's going to be a, probably a six to two game. I think that Luis Garcia is going to pitch well. He may even pitch uh, five shutout innings. Pedro Bias is going to come in give up two runs. <laughs> I hope you're wrong. I mean, I hope he gives up no runs, but I hope we don't see him. Like, oh, I, no. I, I don't wish bad on anybody, but man. I, well, I just, if you have I'm, a five run lead, that's Pedro Bias time. If you have a one run lead, that's not Pedro Bias time. You're right about that. So that's just what I'm saying. You've got to have the right parts for your bullpen and Pedro Bias is not it. And speaking of right parts, why don't you, uh, talk about rock auto and rock auto. Uh, this episode is brought to you by rock auto with the ever increasing number of makes and models. It's now impossible for your local chain and auto parts stores to stock all the parts you need. Why endure all the pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning is your odyssey a LX or EX. And while uh, the person, while you wait for a person behind the counter to order all the parts on their computer, choose the only brand their warehouse carries. Uh, you have the computer with access to rockauto.com at your home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from chain stores or a dealership? rockauto.com is a family business serving do it yourself customers like yourself, like Tom, like Brett. Rockauto.com rock auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. And uh, just like if I need to replace a tail lamp, I just go there and just go rockauto.com. I have an Explorer. I put my year in there, and then I just get what I need. So go uh, explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solutions that your auto parts need. Go to rockauto.com today and see all the parts available for your car and truck. Right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. All right, and uh, while you're doing that, why don't you go and listen to Locked On MLB Prospects with Lindsey Crosby? He does a great job, kind of telling you about the future stars tomorrow. Not just the Astros, not just the Padres, not just the uh, the cool kids. It's just all the different teams, like. Um, even the teams that don't have prospects, like the Astros. Well, we do have prospects, but people don't think we have prospects. So go check out the Locked On MLB Prospects with Lindsey Crosby and make him them your second listen. And uh, Tom, go ahead and use this opportunity to tell us about your, your podcast that you do. So I co-host with Stadium Steffi. Uh, we do the uh, Sugar Land Space Cowboys Sunday, every Sunday. Uh, sorry, I was a mouthful for a second. We are, we got games starting opening day tomorrow uh, for the game. Me and Steph will be there. Uh, they're, 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 they're doing pretty good. It's one of those things where, you know, it's early in the season. They've had a lot of tough, close uh, run one games. The, they're two and four so far. Uh, I can't, can't tell you how much 
the new food and the environment of the ballpark is amazing. Uh, but check us out, uh, our show every Sunday and come out to the ballpark. Costage Field. All righty. So let's go and talk about game two of the Dimeback series. Okay. The Astros are going to have TBD facing uh, Merrill Ke- Kelly. Uh, TBD has a great curveball. Um, it's, it has this breaking and, and spin rate that's um, unbelievable. It's uh, in all seriousness, it's going to be either Framber Valdez or Justin Verlander, either one co ace, however you want to say it. Uh, either one of them is going to be really good against Merrill Kelly. Uh, Merrill Kelly had one start. He had seven strikeouts in that game, and uh, none of the current Astros have ever faced him. Uh, so this will be the first time they've seen him, um, and I believe he's, if he's not a rookie, he uh, he's uh, pretty new to this league. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, so we'll see who the Astros uh, decide to pitch. It's either going to be Valdez or Verlander on normal rest. Um, I think if Verlander's okay, He's going to want to go on Wednesday because he likes to be on that routine. And Valdez is probably be like, I don't care. Just, <laughs> just let me pitch. I don't care. I, I agree. I think that uh, Verlander is going to have a lot to do with what, how that goes. If he's got any kind of residual soreness that he doesn't feel right. I mean, he proved with opening day. He'll take an extra day. He'll take the rest that he needs which I love because health is so important to this roster, especially with uh, McCullers down. So obviously we have total confidence in Framber if, if it's Framber's name that's called. So I'm looking forward to whoever gets the ball. And uh, I'm not so worried about Merrill Kelly. Uh, I think that our guys are going to figure him out. Uh, there's there's a book out there on him. They'll get it. Uh, they're, they're really good hitters, whether they've seen him or not. So uh, I'm just looking forward to more baseball. All righty. So um, Rob Manfred, he d- developed a reputation this offseason of somebody who didn't really maybe give a crap about the players, maybe, or he was looking out for his owners. I don't know what the proper phrase is. I don't give a you know what. Um, but he feels like he needs to repair his relationship with the players. So apparently he said, you know what? I think I'm going to do something nice for the players. So <laughs> On opening day, he left a pair of Bose headphones and a note of appreciation on every player's locker. So can you imagine that? Dear MLB players, I appreciate you so much for you uh, using your uh, your God-given ability to make me so much mo- – I mean, make the owners – I mean, um, to just uh, play the game of baseball you love – and uh, thank you for everything that you do. And uh, hopefully in five years, we don't have to argue and bicker and throw staplers at each other like we had to do this time. Uh, love, Rob Banford. <laughs> Uncle Rob. I Man, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he can ever repair his image. He's just got so much baggage and, and made so many wrong, wrong moves. Whether it be the fans, the players, I, I don't think I don't think there's I don't think Bose headsets are going to get it done. He's got to do something a whole lot better than that. Yeah, and I know there's an actual letter here. I actually see the letter, and uh, he basically said, "Please accept this gift as a small gesture of my appreciation for the hard work that comes with being a major league baseball uh, major leaguer and your respect for our incredible fans. Thank you for everything you do in the game." And it has such a rich history and deep meaning for our fans in the U.S. and around the world. Wishing you best of luck and for a successful season. And he also said, I'm committed to working together with all the players to grow the sport. I'm excited about the opportunities that lie ahead and are working together. I know that we can uh, bring the game to new heights. So basically, this is just PR. <laughs> I don't know that I don't know that it's good PR. I really feel like uh, that's that's just like a here's the here's the tip, you know, like like somebody carries your bags or whatever. It's like here here's the fifty cents. Don't spend that all in one place. So I'm sure yeah. they're not going to look at those headsets and go, "Wow, this is awesome." Oh, they may. Uh, so let's go and switch to the minor leagues. Uh, we don't do this a lot on the show, but since it's an off day, let's go and do this. We have um, look, sh- look to the Sugarland Skeeters, uh, Pedro Leon. Space batting, Cowboys. Uh, space. I said Skeeters. <laughs> ah. It's tough. I know. We've had him for so long, 
Yes. Space Cowboys now. I know. Uh, so with the Space Cowboys, uh, we have a uh, shortstop. Pedro Leon is batting 292, but he's got 12 strikeouts and 24 at bats. It's tough. With one homer and six RBIs, two stone bases. So you have the potential there, but he's striking out 50% of the time. So that's not good. Uh, you have JJ Medjevic with uh, two home runs and a batting 313 right now. Uh, who else is doing pretty good? Uh, David Hensley, a third baseman, is batting 333 at the moment with five RBIs, one home run. Uh, so, and Corey Lee, I know all eyes on him to uh, some point this year, maybe come up and get some internship from Jason Castro and Martin Maldonado to be the heir apparent to the catching uh, position. He's batting 200 right now with one RBI. He's got seven strikeouts and 20 at bats, but that's a little look at the um, kind of looking at the hitting situation. So let's look at the pitching. I know we had JP France. He had a good game the other day. Um, he had uh, four, four innings. He had shutout innings. I forgot how many he struck out, but uh, overall, it was, eight. it was eight. Yeah. Yep. So overall, he's um, for the season. I think he got shelled in his first start, if I remember correctly. So overall, for the season, he's got four and two thirds innings with uh, four earned runs. Uh, sorry, three earned runs and nine strikeouts. So. After getting shelled in his first start, he uh, gave up those three on runs and like two thirds of an inning. Uh, he pitched really good, but this guy is going to be somebody that a lot of Astros fans need to look out for. Uh, Pete Solomon is a guy that we've seen up in the big leagues. He's already uh, pitched uh, four shutout innings with six strikeouts. He's somebody that we need to look at. All eyes are on Hunter Brown. This is a guy that a lot of people have a lot of uh, confidence in. He's got a 2.45 ERA uh, and three and two thirds innings pitched. Um, Josh James, um, he could be somebody that we, we've been talking about. Um, Pedro Baez, this is a guy who could come up. Uh, he's got a 3.86 ERA. Uh, Seth Martinez, I know this is a guy that um, a lot of people projected could make the open day roster. I know it's a small sample size, but in three innings, he's given up three earned runs with one home run. Uh, he has a nine ERA and, uh, Zach Roscup, uh, a left-hander is, um, has a zero ERA with two and two thirds innings and Jonathan Bermudez. He's a guy that won the minor league pitcher of the year for the Astros last year and four and one thirds innings. He's got a zero ERA with, uh, three strikeouts. So, so far it looks like the Sugarland space Cowboys pitching is uh, doing pretty decent. So is that what you've been kind of discussing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, obviously, we're, we're, we're talking about Hunter Brown. Uh, we're talking about France. These are guys that they won't be long for Sugarland if, if a move needs to be made. I think uh, both of them could go into that role. Uh, Josh James, obviously, is somebody that we know a lot of control issues, but carries that, that huge fastball. So we're hoping that he gets right because – bullpen is going to be a necessary thing that, you know, we're always going to have to supplement somewhat, somehow, some way, I think. So he's definitely a candidate. The hitters, it, it seems like, and you brought up uh, uh, Pedro Leon. He's, I mean, I, I know batting average isn't everything, but it's, I, I think he's 292 uh, and his OPS is up, up over 900. So it's, it's all or nothing with him. And it's rare because the Astros hitters are normally very disciplined. And right now the younger guys are kind of free swinging a little bit, but I'm hoping that they'll get, you know, reined in a little and then we'll start to be more disciplined at the plate. And then we'll proceed in the scoreboard. I think that's what was some of the criticism about him. Uh, like there's some whispers towards the end that maybe Pedro Leon could make the opening day roster, but a lot of people were saying, no, he doesn't have the plate discipline yet to do that. He needs to, have some more uh, seasoning and triple a. So uh, speaking of this has nothing to do with the Astros, nothing to do with major league baseball, but Japanese pitching phenom Roki Sasaki pitched a uh, perfect game with 19 strikeouts. He's 20 years old. Can you imagine that being 20 years old? I don't care what league you're in being 20 years old and uh, throwing a perfect game with 19 strikeouts. <laughs> so I tried to do it on MLB the show, like on the easiest setting, you know, with a created character with some like some power ups, stuff like that. Still couldn't do it. So for that kid to do it in any form or fashion is amazing. 
Uh, I had to go look it up once you told me about it. I'm just blown away. Like that's that's probably going to be somebody that people are going to be looking for. It's it's you know that's so rare. Yeah. So th- this team, I think, is just uh, really good. D- oh, by the way, did you hear Joe Madden's uh, quote about the Astros? Oh, I, I saw that. It's really bad. Uh, somebody posted it on Twitter, and then I posted a gif of like the guy like jumping to go like dunk, but like missing like everything because come on, man, you can't lose three games and be like, we're really close. We're really close, man. All we needed is that one more hit. All we needed is to not give up the extra four runs or whatever. But yeah, I think, I mean, Angels are a good team, but um, if you look at the Rangers, the Rangers are exactly the team we thought they would be. They were up at the top in terms of um, runs and uh, offense, but their pitching is at the bottom. And that's why we said they're nowhere near to competing. Now, uh, does that mean they can't fix things in in the next few years? No. But uh, they went out and spent a lot of money on offense, but their pitching is not ready. And John Gray, the guy that they brought in to save their season, just went on IL. Um, So That's one of those you can't get right. Uh, I think that they should have probably spent more money on that rotation, on that bullpen. Uh, I'd be, I mean, honestly, the Blue Jays are who we thought they are, right? They're really good. So for them to get lit up by uh, Toronto, you kind of understand it. But still, that's tough. Yeah. So uh, overall, what do you think about the uh, the whole series? Let's kind of wrap up the show with the whole series. Do you think the Astros go into town and sn- uh, snake bite the Diamondbacks and sweep them? That's the hope. Obviously, you know, anything can happen. I believe that, you know, it's really going to depend on guys like Altuve. It's going to depend on some of these guys that are struggling with the bat a little bit. I think the pitching is going to be fine. They've been great so far. So if we can score some runs, I think we'll win both games. The Diamondbacks are one and three. The Astros are three and one. And I want to point out the, and the Diamondbacks have a negative nine run differential, FYI. Um, and, uh, Brett Strom is their pitching coach. So that's, uh, not, I guess he's seen that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And nope. speaking of that, I was surprised at how many former Astros there were on this team. Uh, they're Humberto Castellanos. Uh, you have Corbin Martin, Mark Melanson, Oliver Perez. Then you have Seth Beer even though he was technically a minor leaguer, but still. So that's still a lot of people to be on active roster who were former Astros players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be interesting because I'm sure, you know, there's going to be definitely some some banter back and forth with some of the guys, you know, uh, guys that knew you know them, obviously. So uh, it'll be good to see. I would say more on the Corbin Martin side, because I think that he probably thought that he was going to be part of this team for a while. Uh, He came up, had that great first start, and then he kind of struggled a little bit. But then he had the Tommy John surgery and then he got traded. And it's just how the it rolls. Sometimes the Diamondbacks took a risk and now they're going to benefit from this. I don't know if he's starting or if he's a reliever right now. Let me look. Uh, He's actually starting right now. So, um, okay. So he's back to starting. So cool. So I'm glad that he's uh, got his career back on track because this guy could be a good uh, starter. And the Astros, who did they trade? That Wasn't was the, that part of the Grinky trade? Grinky trade. Yes, that's right. And so uh, we'll never have beer 30 in Houston, unfortunately. That is so bad. Yeah. But, I was uh, definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. But it's, I guess the Dimebacks are lucky that they have uh, a DH now because they have some place for Seth Beer to play. Uh, but he's not even playing every day. So anyway, uh, once again, uh, Tom, thank you for joining. Uh, tell us where they can find you. Tell us where they can find your podcast. And uh, thank you for joining. Thank you so much for having me, Eric. Again, you can find me at Third Coast Tom on Twitter. Uh, Space Cowboys Sunday, you can find that on anywhere you listen to your podcast, whether it be Spotify or Apple. And uh, you can also find uh, Space Coast, I'm sorry, Space Cowboys Sunday (laughs) on Twitter. I I get get caught up too, uh, at Space Cowboys Sunday. All right, that's all we got. We'll be back after tomorrow's game to discuss, hopefully, Astros victory where Luis Garcia dominates and Alex Bregman continues his player of the week um, status and Jeremy Pena 
continues rocketing towards rookie of the year status. So uh, for um, uh, me, for Tom, and for Brett, uh, that's all we got for this edition of Locked On Astros po- podcast and Ghost Rose.